What's happening guys, Sam Adams here and welcome to another episode of The Drop and this week is a light week as you would expect it to be because we have the release of a Call of Duty. That's just a trend that happens every single year. I mean, Call of Duty is coming out, everything else wants to get out of the way. It's kind of like if you are jogging down a road and then all of a sudden you hear an 18 wheeler behind you, you're going to dive into the ditch. Anyways, two games take up this week's entire episode of The Drop, so without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. <laughs> Kicking things off this week, we have our headliner, which is Call of Duty World War II coming to the PlayStation 4, the Xbox One, and the PC. Call of Duty World War II creates the definitive World War II next generation experience across three different game modes, campaign, multiplayer, and cooperative. Featuring stunning visuals, the campaign transports players to the European theater as they engage in an all-new Call of Duty story set in iconic World War II battles. Multiplayer marks a return to original boots-on-the-ground Call of Duty gameplay. Authentic weapons and traditional run-and-gun action immerse you in a vast array of World War II-themed locations. And finally, the cooperative mode unleashes a new and original story in a standalone game experience full of unexpected adrenaline-pumping moments. Call of Duty World War II is kind of like a make-it-or-break-it for the entire franchise overall because uh, pretty much since Black Ops 3 with the exception of Modern Warfare Remastered the entire franchise has become so incredibly fast-paced that people have gotten a bit tired of it because you have had the implementation of wall running uh, you've had the implementation of the boost jumping and all of this fast-paced gameplay mechanic stuff that's being introduced and it's just kind of overwhelmed players and brought them to call back to what the franchise had whenever it first began which is that boots on the ground kind of World War 2 style gameplay and so that's exactly what we are getting this week, an entire game full of that. So now the question is, how are people going to receive this new kind of gameplay experience, which is actually one that's pretty classic, and I would say that this is going to be, if I had to guess, one of the most successful Call of Duty titles in the past five years, because there is evidence that people are being listened to. There is evidence of community involvement with what the actual game is representing, and that is a very welcome feature, if you want to call it that. Uh, but more so than that, the past couple of betas that I've played, I believe I played on the PlayStation 4, and then I also played on the PC, and so with my PC experience specifically, because that is where I would choose to play Call of Duty World War II, aside from some hacking issues that I've heard are going to be addressed in the final product, the game was fantastic. I love that classic boots on the ground kind of gameplay, and it really did harken back to my early days with the Call of Duty franchise, and that is exactly what the franchise overall and the fan base truly needs to reinstill that passion for Call of Duty that's been missing over the course of the past few years. So when it comes down to it, this is going to be a turning point for Call of Duty one way or the other. This is either going to be the end of Call of Duty as we know it in the final kind of stand, if you will, uh, for the franchise overall, or this could very well be the rebirth, a new generation of Call of Duty fans that is going to come out of World War II and kind of take the franchise in a different direction. Which path it will take is yet to be seen, but I suppose we will find out this week when the game comes out on the PlayStation 4, the Xbox One, and the PC. Next up, and boy, this is an exciting one, we have Monopoly coming to the Nintendo Switch. Experience three unique 3D boards at home or on the go with up to six players in total, or take your game online and challenge players in quick matches. Customize your game by selecting from six official house rules chosen by Monopoly fans around the world. Don't have time for a full game? Speed it up with special goals that shorten gameplay sessions and action cards to move you around the board and penalize your opponents. Build your empire and trade your way to victory. So Monopoly, strangely enough, works pretty well whenever it comes to a digital video game kind of setup. And I also like watching this game streamed live on Twitch. I know that whenever a couple of big streamers get together and play a game of Monopoly, the results are absolutely hilarious. So with it coming out on the Switch, and with people being able to play with up to six players at the same time, I feel like this is going to be one of the best party games on the Switch if it is done correctly. Now, if there are some technical issues, if it doesn't flow smoothly, if there are frame rate issues, anything like that, the game is definitely going to degrade and quality and therefore rating overall. Uh, however, when it comes down to it, Monopoly on the Nintendo Switch, a system that is made for party style games, it's a no-brainer. This is going to be a fantastic one if you are a social kind of gamer with your Nintendo Switch. So like I said, sorry for a short episode of The Drop, but quite frankly, there's nothing else coming out this week that I found really interesting. If I missed something, leave it in the comment section down below. If you happen to be new to the channel, I do upload new stuff throughout the week, so there is always something new right here whenever you do stop by to watch some videos, and I am live streaming throughout the week on twitch.tv slash the Samuel Adams. You can head over there. The links for all this stuff are down below. But as for right now, I want to thank each and every one of you guys for watching this particular video. I will talk to you soon. Peace.